All right, what's your name, where are you from, and why are you here today? My name is Paul, I'm from Tampa, Florida, I'm here at the conference. And I notice you're wearing a West Point t-shirt, are you a West Point graduate? Yes, I am. Sir? Excuse me? <laughs> yes. And, and what did you do in the Army? I was a tank commander. All right, and uh, when were you in? 86 and 91. Anything interesting you learned during that time? About everything I know. <laughs> that, I would, ooh, that's scary on a lot of levels, I don't know. Because I'm pretty sure Army stands for ain't ready to be Marines yet. <laughs> but, uh, no, everything you know in five years in the Army, did they teach you to stop learning when you got out? Is it, you are no longer allowed to assimilate any more information? Of course not. But th probably the most important things I've learned, my life lessons, many of them have come from the military. All right, well, one of the things that, that you know, we share as veterans is a concern for the veterans community. We see 20-plus veterans committing suicide every single day in this country. What do you think is behind that? Well, I don't know there's a quick answer to that one. I mean, the bottom line is a lot of these folks come back. They've been traumatized by whatever has happened to them. And, and many times they either don't have the resources, they don't know where the resources are, they don't have the love, they don't have the family support, they don't have God. There's a lot of things that lead someone to go down a dark path, right? So in a State of the Union address, Donald Trump said that for patients suffering from fatal diseases, he didn't want them to have to leave the country to pursue experimental treatments that are illegal here, do you think that should be true for veterans facing issues with PTSD as well? Well, I don't exactly know what those treatments are. I mean, I don't know what we would have to leave the United States for in order, in order to get some kind of, you know, I don't know what that treatment is. I would say this, if there is a treatment out there that is well documented, efficacious, that works, then our veterans should have every tool in the toolbox and they should be allowed to have it. Well, should a veteran be able to decide for themselves without any external authority, like what they seek treatment with? Well, I don't know about that, right? I mean, we have a government that helps provide medicines, for example, and the medicines have to be approved, right? Well, so. the FDA has had a really disastrous effect when it comes to that, having killed tens of millions of people by keeping life-saving drugs off the market and putting unsafe drugs on the market. So the government's doing a pretty terrible job here, and I would suggest that with veteran suicides as well, considering the most effective treatments for symptomatic effects, namely marijuana, are still illegal in most places in the country, and MDMA, a uh, proven cure for, for PTSD is, is still illegal and people are trying to raise tens of millions of dollars to get it through FDA clearance. Do you think veterans should have to wait for that or veterans should be able to pursue those treatments on their own? No, nah, look, we have laws in place. We put medicines in place for a certain reason. I wouldn't want a, a veteran not to get proper care, but I also wouldn't want to get him you know, give him access to care that that's not proven, right? So if a veteran smokes pot somewhere, it's illegal, and it makes them feel better treating their symptoms, you, you want them to go to jail for that? Well, right now, the federal law is, is what it is. So, so, yes, you would lock up a veteran and send him to jail if, if it were up to you in a place that it's illegal, even if that veteran believes that that's in his best interest in treating his PTSD symptoms. I believe anyone who breaks the law is held accountable to the law. So, so the founders, you, the, the founders of this country should have been tried and hung by King George? Perhaps. It sounds like a very anti-American perspective for a West Point graduate to take. No, I think I'm taking an establishment way to do this. There is a way to, to safely give people medicines. That's what I'm getting. If, you're asking, if your question is, should someone be given pot? My point is very simple. If, that, if, if that's legal and that's proven to be a medical way to do it, then that should be an option. But, but if you're saying not, they should not have the freedom that, that for me as a veteran, who served in combat in this country, if I want to decide how I want to treat myself and the government disagrees with me, I should be locked in jail for, for ingesting a substance well, the government says is illegal? When you take an oath to support and defend the Constitution, right. that you support the laws that are made by that, that state until, until the law changes. Where, where does the Constitution authorize the FDA? Where does the Constitution authorize the drug war? Specifically, it doesn't. But it also says that there's an executive branch, traditional congressional branch, right. that right that makes laws, and we we support and defend those laws. So the founders who wrote the Declaration of Independence, saying that we have a, a right to alter and abolish systems of government that no longer serve us, you think they were wrong? The founders of this country were wrong, and that the authorities in place today who do these uh, un-American policies that they're right, and you'd rather well, support that authority than challenge that authority? The, the, first of all, the founders were wrong in many things. Right? They owned slaves. That doesn't make it right. right. So at the end of it, all I'm trying to say, and very clear, is that as long as we have laws, I as a veteran should be adhering to those laws.
So if a law was contrary to the Constitution, well, no, no, because there's a different there's a different issue here. If a law is unlawful, if the Congress passes a law that is contrary to the Constitution, don't you have a duty to disobey it? Because that's in your oath. Like if, if your commanding officer ordered you to do something that was in violation of the Geneva Conventions, you're supposed to disobey, right? Legal or immoral. Right. That's right. So if Congress passes a law that's illegal and immoral, shouldn't we disobey that as well? That's not up to the individual to make that decision. Oh, ultimately it always is. You have, you have the choice to be obedient or disobedient. He has to do it through the correct ways, right? He helps make, make changes to the laws. So never be disobedient, never disobey, just do what you're told and, and, and beg for freedom? That doesn't sound very American to me. You do the right thing. There are ways to change this. this. We just got to do it the right way. Good people break bad laws. Could be. You don't think there are any bad laws in this country worth breaking today? Well, I'm certain there's many. So go out and, and make the effort to change the law. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you for considering these issues. And I hope for the sake of all the veterans who are facing suicide in this country, that people like you don't have the ability to exercise that authority and tell us what is appropriate treatment or not, because ultimately the individual veteran should be able to decide for him or herself, and they're going to be the best judge of what's right for them. So I hope you consider that. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.